First tonight, breaking news out of New Bedford, where we've learned two people are unaccounted for after a massive fire tore through a four story building here in New Bedford this afternoon. I'm Shannon Heggie. I'm Mike Montecalvo. We learned earlier today that one person was killed in this fire right here. At least five others were sent to the hospital, two of them in serious condition. We have live team coverage tonight from New Bedford. Kayla Fish has the latest on how the more than two dozen people who call this boarding house home are being helped out tonight. But first we go live to Amanda Pitts, who's been at the scene all day and has the new details for us tonight. Amanda. Well, Mike Shannon, we won't know the cause of this fire tonight, but it has been absolutely devastating for so many families here in New Bedford. Two people are unaccounted for tonight. One person has been found dead. Five others taken to the hospital, some of them with serious injuries. Thick smoke coating a neighborhood in New Bedford as fire ripped through a four story building on a Cushnet Avenue, taking one person's life. Uh, unfortunately, we, we, were, we were able to recover one deceased male from this um, from the residence. We just uh, recovered him just a short time ago. Crews arrived around 315 to an apocalyptic scene at the boarding house Royal Crown Lodging, where more than two dozen people called home. They had people that were hanging out the windows requiring rescue. So uh, they, we were actually able to rescue uh, at least three people over a ground ladder. Uh, some, uh, we know at least one person, uh, I think more jumped out or jumping out windows. All while smoke billowed into the sky, visible for miles, making it hard to even see the structure at times. It's what caught Philip McDonald's attention. When I came around the corner, somebody pointed and said, it's Larry's building, meaning my brother. His brother luckily was not home, but his neighbors were. The guy who was sleeping, and he's a friend of my brother's, and they literally carried him on his back because he was barefooted. And they said it was smoky, it was scary, it was, it was escalating real quick. So. so quick that crews who were inside the building searching for additional victims were pulled out. Even with uh, a large amount of manpower in that building, it became dangerous. Using a drone to help in the efforts from above, crews fought the flames from outside while parts of the building collapsed. To see like the whole roof cave in and like a historic building is kind of, you know, devastating here. As neighbors looked on in shock, the fire kept raging and continued to reignite well into the night. You think you got it out and then fire breaks out from somewhere. All while crews continue to search for two missing people. We're going to try and go window by window and see if we can see uh, any victims or where it's safe if we can. And I don't know if we can enter that building at all to try and see if we can account for those people. Now, fire investigators are on scene here looking into the cause of this fire. As I mentioned, dozens of people called this place home. They are now left with nothing tonight. My colleague Kayla Fish has been speaking to people who are helping those folks. She has she joins us now with more on their efforts. Kayla. Well, Amanda, the Red Cross tells us that they're helping a total of 27 residents who were forced from their homes by this fire as they try to figure out what's next. Everything in their world has been turned upside down. The Red Cross Emergency Management from New Bedford and the state and nonprofits and community groups all coming together to help dozens of people who lost everything when flames gutted their homes on a Cushnet Avenue Tuesday. Tragedy happens. Michael Donetto was supposed to move into the building next month and has friends who lived inside. I have not spoken to them. Um, I'm worrying about them. I'm trying to contact with them. Many of the affected residents coming here to Seven Hills Behavioral Health, just two blocks from the fire scene. I mean, I just bought in somebody right now that doesn't even speak English. He's been there for a year and a half, and he says, I walked out like this with my flip-flops. I have nothing. Here, workers with the Red Cross and Seven Hills can get victims information and give them food, water, and a place to wait until they find somewhere they can stay for the short term. They'll also be connected to service to get them through the days ahead. But it's about helping people get back up on their feet and, you know, make sure they're safe. Reverend David Lima leads the Inner Church Council of Greater New Bedford. He says finding new homes for more than 20 people who had been living in that building will be a challenge. It's already difficult to find enough places to rent, you know, in affordable places. This is a rooming house. It's a boarding house. So it's cheaper. It's single room occupancy type stuff. So you don't, you can't just 
all of a sudden place people in a place that they can afford. But that's the mission that lies ahead for these nonprofits and other groups doing what they can to help their neighbors who need it most. When you lose what little you have, where do you turn? So we try to offer them hope and we try to connect with the services. And Reverend Lima tells me that they'll be having a meeting on Thursday morning with affected residents as well as all of those community organizations to try to regroup and figure out what lies ahead, next steps for those who again lost everything here in New Bedford tonight. Live in New Bedford tonight, I'm Kayla Fish, 12 News.